So today's topic is what is credit score and what is debt to income ratio? Why credit score and DTI matters? Should you improve it? Yes. Answer is yes, absolutely. It is very vital in your financial planning and you should constantly improve your credit score and DTI ratio by making right choices. In this video, first I'll explain about credit scores, impact and improvement methods, and then debt to income ratio. Keep listening. So good credit score. What is good credit score? Generally credit score between 700 and 749 are labeled as good and 750 plus is considered excellent. There are many different scoring models that impact your credit score. Each lender assesses credit score and different factors affecting your credit score. Uh, but ultimately, good credit score is a key to best rates out there. Okay? Good credit score is a key to get the best rate out there. Point to be noted. Okay. So the factors affecting your score and action items. Number one is payment history. Over two accounts, 30, 60, 90 days late will affect your score. So pay on time. Number two is length of credit history. Start building today with a secured credit card. It will improve with time. If you can't qualify for a normal card, go to your bank and get a secured credit card and start building your credit. Number three, credit usage. Keep it less than 30% and pay on time. Let's say your credit limit is $500 and then you should spend below $150 and pay before the due date. Number four, as a credit mix, having experience with different types of credit like revolving credit card accounts and installment student loans may help improve your credit health. Since your credit mix is a minor factor, you probably should not take out a loan and pay interest just to add to your credit mix. Not a good idea. But if you only have an installment loan, you might want to consider opening a credit card and use it for the minor expenses that you can afford to pay each month. Least important but minor impact is a recent credit. Creditors may review your credit reports and scores when you apply to open a new line of credit. A record of this, known as an inquiry, can stay on your um, credit reports for up to two years. Don't be afraid to shop around for loans though. I want you to go shop for the mortgage loans. Don't be scared for the inquiry because credit scoring models recognize that the consumers want to compare their options and they are shopping for mortgage. So multiple inquiries for mortgage, auto loans, and student loans from a single 14 to 45 day period depending on the loan and credit scoring model may be treated as single inquiry when calculating your scores. So with this, I'm going to wrap up quickly how to improve your credit score. If you have not had a credit for that long, continue to make all your payments on time and only use as much credit you need. Okay, best way to improve, improve to get a prepaid credit card where you can make purchases and keep the usage below 30% and make payment before the due date. That will keep that will keep increasing your credit points monthly. Over time, as you open accounts when you need them, make sure that you can manage them responsibly. Eventually, you will build enough history and your credit score will keep moving up. If you are due on any accounts, do your best to caught up and make payments on time. As time goes by, your history will have less impact on your current score. You are entitled to a free credit report every 12 months from each of three major consumer reporting companies, Equifax, Experian and TransUnion. You can request a copy from annualcreditreport.com. You can order online via phone and mail. Very important, very important to get it and review yearly and report any mistakes. It's your credit 
that is very vital for your financial success. So start taking action today. Start taking action today. Go online and go get your free credit report copy and review it. Next topic is DTI, debt to income ratio. When buying a home, your DTI, debt to income ratio is very critical. DTI is the percentage of, of consumers monthly gross income that goes towards paying debts. There is two kinds of DTI that lenders consider. Again, call us to get exactly how this would impact you in the event of qualifying for a mortgage. I work with lending experts who can help you identify the things that you need to take care today if you're thinking about buying or investing in near future. So two kinds of DTI. Number one is front end ratio. Indicates the percentage of income that goes towards housing cost, which for renters is the rent amount and for homeowners is pity. Mortgage principal and interest, mortgage insurance premium, insurance, home insurance, and property taxes. And homeowners, association dues if you have it to wait. The second type is back-end ratio. Indicates the percentage of income that goes towards paying all recurring debt payments, including those covered in the first DTI, front-end ratio, and other debts such as credit card payments, car loan payments, student loan payments, child support, alley money, any other personal loans, and legal judgments. So any types of payments lender will consider these debts to calculate your debt to income ratio to, to see where, what type of loan you will qualify for. So here is an example about the DTI that we just spoke about. So for example, if the lender requires DTI 28 by 36. So here, um, here is an example of the allowed expenses. So let's say your gross income is $45,000 and 28% of, 48, of $45,000 comes out to be $12,600. That is your front end DTI, okay? So that is your allowable expense, okay? And the 36 of that 45,000 is 16,200. That is 36% of $45,000. That is back end ratio. That includes your housing expense, plus recurring debt. Okay, so that's your back end DTI. So front end DTI is your rent, or if you own a home, then pity. And then the back end DTI is a front end DTI, plus car payment, credit card payment, student loans payment, and any other personal loan payment, child support, plus alimony, plus any other legal judgment payments that you pay monthly that the your all that includes all your debts and lender will use these when calculating the DTIs to qualify you for a loan. So for example, um, the general idea is if you pay fifteen hundred dollars a month for your rent, then if your income is six thousand dollars, then fifteen thousand dollars divided by six thousand dollars is twenty-five percent then your front end debt to income ratio is 25 percent and let's say you have another um, monthly expenses dollar hundred for your auto loan and four hundred dollars for your other monthly debts okay so fifteen hundred plus five hundred is two thousand dollars and your monthly gross income is six thousand dollars so two thousand dollars divided by six thousand dollars is 33 percent so your back end DTI is $33,000, okay? So this is how the lenders typically calculate the DTIs. In the United States, for confirming loans, there are following limits that are, that are currently typical. For conventional financing, limits are uh, typically 28 by 36. For FHA limits are 31 by 43. Um, when using the FHA's energy efficient mortgage program, however, a stretch, a stretch the ratios which is 33 by 45 and we alone's limits are only calculated with the DTI of 41 um, that is effectively equal to 41 by 41 although VA does not use that notion and USDA loans are 29 by 41 
So in a nutshell, your credit score and your debt to income ratio are very important factors to consider when qualifying for a mortgage. Give me a call today if you definitely want to be a homeowner tomorrow, okay? Because you need to work on all these things today in order to buy a home tomorrow so that you can take the steps to convert your dream into a reality without running into hurdles last minute. Again, don't do it all alone. Reach out to me at 925-980-3096. Hoping you found this video valuable. And again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe at the bottom of this video. Thank you.